Good morning, everybody. I am so excited that you are here. Today, we are going to be talking about building community with equity. And I am super excited about our Monday mentor today. We got to have one person for the first time just now. And we've decided we're just like long lost sisters. So you are in for an energy filled treat today. Erica Tate is a, has a doctorate in education, but started her career in edu in electrical engineering. Maybe I have to make sure. Oh yeah, I'm right. And has developed an amazing career in building community with design and intention all around this idea about equity. And I am so excited to have her on today. Welcome. Hello, Hello Jen. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Oh, I am thrilled that you are here. We met in, I think, the comment section of another live. Kim Cal, thank you very much. And I was like, oh, I have to know this woman. I am so excited that she's here. So just tell our listeners a little bit about how you got to where you are. Like, how do you start with an undergrad in engineering and end up with a doctorate in education doing this work? I want to hear well, yes, it was um, just as windy as a journey as you might think <laughs> when you say those two things together. Um, yes, I'm an engineer turned educator um, and I started my career as an electrical engineer and just really enjoyed designing and technology, um, especially around computing. Um, but at the same time, while I was in um, my undergraduate, I um, was also very interested in diversifying the pipeline, getting more women and students of color into um, engineering or other STEM careers. And so during my free time um, and through some work study jobs, <laughs> I ended up um, working like in the dean's office, helping with um, programs that connect students with faculty research, to thinking about um, tutoring programs. I was part of the National Society for Black Engineers to help think about what resources and supports. And so I just continued to do that work. And, and even as an engineer working in industry, anytime they were like, would you like to go um, teach kids how to use, make robots? Yes, yes, I do. More than I want to be here. So <laughs> I pivoted, moved into education, discovered um, research um, that you could build and design curriculum for students to get excited about STEM, to connect STEM to their communities, um, and to um, think about STEM as a way to um, bring about equity, to um, pursue social justice. And that's how I ended up here. I now have a business through knowledge um, that advances equity in schools and communities. And I work really hard to empower educators and school leaders to advance equities in their own equity in their own community um, through collaborative research and um, insightful evaluation and equity driven professional learning. So I'm happy for the windy journey because it's exciting every day. Well, it's so good. I and mean, even one of the things that, um, so we've got several guests who are on today in our comments. So welcome to our friends. If you've got comments, make sure that you drop them there. If you're catching the replay, drop them there too. Uh, so many of you know that I'm also a former educator. And one of the things that the switch from the world of education to the corporate business space has been this kind of bemoaning of how do we increase equity and this kind of myth out there that there aren't diverse thoughts and ideas and people of color or women out there doing this work, which in some ways is such a myth. In other ways, you actively notice that this pipeline wasn't big enough. And so tell me a little bit about why the education space was where you went to make that difference. Oh, um, I love learning. I'm a military brat, so I went to like nine different schools <laughs> as a child. <laughs> yes, a lot. So, um, and they were all very different, but what persisted is my like love of learning and continuing. And I know from my personal life that learning and um figuring out new things and figuring out new pathways has really served me. But I also know from being in those schools as a student, a student of color, um, that um, they weren't fair always. And that um, if education is a cornerstone of our society, the cornerstone of our, our communities, if it is a launching um, platform for students, then we need to make sure that it's fair. And we need to make sure that um, all students' needs are being met. Um, it is such, we spend most of our childhood um, there. And so, 
Um, it's just a really important and pivotal place. And so I enjoy being there. I enjoy thinking and designing different ways to help students have these learning experiences that are rich, that let them capitalize on the strengths that they bring to the classroom. And I love helping teachers do the same because most teachers want to do best by their students. They want to ensure that their um, students are getting the best start in life. And I want to be there to give them tools and to help them discover those practices that make the biggest difference for their students. And the same the leaders in that space? How do you support teachers um, to be able to make changes in their classroom that serve their students best, which therefore serves our communities best and serves us best. As we get older and the world changes, we want these lifelong learners to be in control with good decision-making skills and empathy for people so that this all world- of things. <laughs> All the good things. We need all the good things. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. So I, I just want to shout out to Shelby, who is in the comments, who is um, just l leaving the world of military spousedom. So it, so like, yes, military brats and our military service. I'm actually speaking at a military event later this month for seasoned military spouses. So I, and I'm a, um, a child of two veterans. And so I get that world and how you see the differences in all these different locations, like, oh, wait, it's not the same everywhere. And I think it's really easy as leaders for us to think it's the same everywhere because that's our experience. And we forget that our experience isn't central, that other people come to the table with different experiences, which is what I think is part of what's building a great community, that diverse thought. There's all this research about how diversity of thought, diversity of experience, brings innovation and more collaboration into a team. And so, uh, you know, going back to, I'm going to make a connection here between the teacher world and the business world, that a teacher is building a community of learners. And their goal is to build a community that is safe, that gets everybody into the, the goal of learning. And as leaders, we build teams in the business world to do whatever the goal of our team is. And the goal might be increasing profits. It might be serving a community, depending on what your values and mission of your organizations are. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just drawing that parallel because I think you could really share with us what are some of the important things about building community on a team are like what is so valuable about community yeah well i think the first part is in that word what is so valuable right is really valuing what people are bringing to the table so in a classroom when i'm working with teachers um is sometimes we have to stop and pause and really think about what our beliefs are about the students we are serving the families that we are in service to as being a school in that community and really recognize that they are coming with these rich experiences these rich histories these rich talents and how do i set up my learning community how do i set up my business community how do i set up my workplace culture so that you can bring those experiences in and not just so I can hear about them and their fun coffee talk or fun start <laughs> the morning talk, right? But that these are resources for you to learn. These are resources for your peers to learn. Um, there's a resource for the teacher to learn from students or leaders to learn for those, you know, who they're serving. And so um, I just think valuing the fact that we all have these rich lived experiences that have been shaped by histories that may or may not have been kind to us, right? Um, but that we bring them into this, we bring a set of skills for coping um, into this space, which can also be seen as problem solving, right? Um, and addressing and moving through challenges. And so welcome these and value these um, experiences and strategies and ideas um, as resources for your community, whatever it looks like, because it really will be um, the way that you make connection um, and the way that you move together um, toward the collective knowledge or connective, you know, uh, whatever collective goal that you have in your setting. Yes. And I think you're you're so right. And I, this idea that lived experiences change the way we interpret the information and the skills that we bring. So we've all got degrees. I mean, like almost every leader has got some kind of degree, some kind of certification. Some of us have pages and pages. Others as us have two bullet points and all of that is great. But what we forget sometimes is that that lived experience shapes how we bring that to the table. And that is just as valuable as whatever letters are behind our name or in front of our name, however we do that. Yeah. And it's so important. And I love that you bring that idea out that our lived experiences from childhood, from previous careers, 
all of that influences and impacts what we get to bring to the table. And a good leader is going to recognize that. Sometimes that's tricky. Like as a leader, we can go, well, how do I do that? How do I bring it from the the water cooler, the coffee talk, the funny Slack channel of what you do this weekend? You know, how do we bring that? Can you give us a a tactic, a tip, something that right now we can do as a leader in a space? Like what what would you suggest for people? I would say, you know, one of the things that helps me um when I'm doing instructional coaching with teachers, um, which is like this very specific thing. A teacher has a professional or personal goal that they want to achieve with their um, their learning community. And, um, and I come in usually in the middle of their year, in the middle of their career, right? And so they have all of these things that are going for them, their professional experience, their relationship with um, their students. And so the conversations that I have with them that help me kind of move toward change are one, what do you intend to get out of this situation? And what are you going to do, you know, in terms of instruction to um, move your students closer to this goal or to open up the space so more children speak or to um, give students more options, right, for representing how they um, best think. Um, And then we have this goal and then we do it, right? They go in and they teach and I'm there as a coach, as a supporter, but I'm also there gathering evidence, right? I'm trying to figure out what it is that they're doing that is aligning with what they want to do and what is it that they're doing that may be taking away from that goal um, and why is that happening? And then we follow that up with a conversation, which is so key. and, And it's the second conversation that always feels the most important to me because it's grounded in evidence. And I think that's Mm -hmm. the thing to take away is that I'm not talking um, to you about what it is that you want to do or what it is that you think you are doing. We've had that conversation. We've had a chance to put that in action, but I really get a chance to talk to you about what has happened. Mm -hmm. Um, And now that we know this has happened now, based on what you know about your students, based on what you know about your teaching, based on what you believe, why do you think that's happened? And now how can we take some of that and make this tweak or make this change or push um, you toward that next step or that next goal? And so I do think it is obviously listening um, to what those hopes or goals, right, or intentions are, but then also figuring out those opportunities to um, gather evidence or information so that you can ground your conversation and begin to make a concrete path of action toward that change that you want. Um, And so I think those types of conversations and the more that we have and then the more that they become part of our culture, the part of the way that we um, do change um, um, in our our spaces um, is helpful and and moves that forward and allows for us to um, um, meet the people we are serving where they are. Yes. I here's the thing that I'm taking away and listening as a, as a coach myself and working with people inside organizations, we need that data piece because the stories we tell ourselves are always slightly inaccurate. <laughs> That's my kind way of saying that. But when we're talking about gathering data, there's a several different ways you can do that. You can say to two people, hey, I'm, I'm really wanting to improve how I lead a meeting. Like I have a client right now that's working on that. And so what I've had her do is like, I want you to pick two people that come to your meetings and don't just pick your two best friends because they're always going to be super nice to you. Always pick one, but <laughs> also pick the person that you're kind of scared of. And like, can you give me some feedback and help them know what that feedback is? I really want to make sure we're ending on time, or I really want to make sure I'm appearing and actually open to questions. I'm wanting, you know, like whatever it is that your goal is, share the goal and get that feedback. And then you can coach somebody around that. So if you're the leader, encourage your people to gather their data. And that that's what I'm hearing from you saying. So it's not just how we feel about it. But it's, I mean, that's important. How we feel about it is a component. (laughs) Change with just how we feel. We have to do something different and we can't do something different and change if we don't know what was. Um, So I love that idea of really thinking about how do I use data to inform even these simple things that we have that seem, could seem overwhelming or could be full of emotion and that's fine. But how do I like, ooh, what's the thing? What's that little piece of data? And I love that tip for leaders that are trying to work with their team to 
to approach it as a coaching situation and let them, because the other thing that I heard that you say, how would you like to change it? How do you think this might go? What, what would you do differently? And I find, especially when I was an instructional coach and teaching teachers that they know they're like, Oh, this is what happened. And if I got to do that again, here's what I want to try differently. They mm -hmm. usually know. <laughs> and then we get to come in and say, okay, here's what you wanted to do differently, but here's what you did. Like, how mm -hmm. do we, Continue to move that skill forward. So I just think that's such an applicable change management idea from education into the world of business. And as Christine is saying, you know, like welcoming and valuing those experiences is important and um, bringing those in makes it feel safe for people to, to try and possibly not get it right. And that can be really scary sometimes. Um, so I, can't believe that it's time for us to start to close. I was like, wait, no, that's not true. Um, <laughs> alas, it is. I would love for you, Erica, to tell us about your new live stream called Remix EQ. I'm super excited about this. Yes. Yes. So equity is like, I'm just super passionate about it. Um, I think it is the way that um, a lens that we need to put on our, on um, so that we can um, make change in this world. But I love listening and hearing about all the different ways that people are doing that. So Remix EQ Live is an interview show. The premise of the show is that we remix people, two different people who are in the same industry, but are tackling or affecting change in, in, in the space of equity in different ways. And so it's an opportunity for us to unlearn the stories and the pathways of people who are doing this work. Um, it's an opportunity um, for us to see some of the strategies and approaches that they are putting in place in their communities, whether they're local or are global and most of all which is the part that really speaks to me it's a chance for us to be inspired by the work that they're doing and the contribution that they're making to their community and so i have loved it it's every second and fourth friday at 11 30 a.m eastern um and we have we do it across different topics so we have talked about it um equity in medicine we have talked about equity in um, entrepreneurship. Um, our upcoming show this Friday will be around philanthropy. We'll be pulling back the veil <laughs> um, to talk a bit about that. Um, we have an education show, of course, um, coming up <laughs> later in the season. But yes, it's a great opportunity to meet new people, connect with new ideas and new approaches, and to just be inspired to make the world a more just place. Oh, it's so good. And I think when we start talking about equity, people can get a little bit overwhelmed really quickly, especially if you haven't done any work in that area. Um, and it can be like, oh my gosh, it's so overwhelming. I don't know. I don't want to feel bad. I don't know. And so I love this concept of seeing that there are different ways to approach it and it's multifaceted work. There isn't just one solution. There is There are multiple solutions that have to go forth at the same time. And um, so I love the work that you're doing and 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 so appreciate that you're letting us in on that. Like you said, pulling back the veil um, is is really is really special. Like I just think that's such valuable work. And so thank you for, thank for you. doing that. I would love to encourage people to follow Erica here on LinkedIn. She is so much fun. And find out more information at blueknowledge.com. Blue without an E. I made that mistake and had to fix it. So B L U. K knowledge the rest. And so make sure that you connect with her here. Check out there. Remix Live is the second and fourth Fridays of every month. So that means this Friday, the 8th. Go check it out um, at that event here. And just, I want to just, mm, on what you said about that when we accept and welcome those shared experiences that are different from our own, we, we can really build community. And I think that is such a key part of your message. And I just want to, end with that. So thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it, everybody. I will be back next week here on Monday Mentor. Erica, thank you for being our mentor today. And we will see you all next week. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.